Rouge Baseballs. Here's a quick look at some of the impact free agents that Major League teams will be able to bid on this winter. Note this is subject to change as occasionally players will re-sign with their current team before they become a free agent. And multiple players do have opt-outs which they may choose not to exercise. Let's start with Javier Baez. He's got one of the most electric bats in the Major Leagues. He's a solid defender who can play shortstop, he can play second base, we've even seen him play third base a little bit. He was traded from the Cubs to the Mets at the trade deadline. He had a little bit of a hiccup with the fans in New York, but he is still an impact player and he will help a contender. He's a two-time All-Star, a Gold Glove winner, a Silver Slugger winner, and he finished second in the MVP voting in 2018. Next up is another former Cub that was traded at the trade deadline to the San Francisco Giants, Chris Bryant. It's hard to believe that he's already been in the major leagues for seven years. He is a four-time All-Star, an MVP, and a Rookie of the Year. Let's not forget a world champion. In 2021, he played all over the diamond. He played in the outfield, he played at third base, he played at first base, and he still has a very potent bat. He will be entering his age 30 season and is probably looking for a long-term deal. Next on the list is Nick Castellanos. He may or may not be a free agent. He has an opt-out. He's officially signed through 2023 for $64 million. He's a third baseman and a right fielder. He's a big guy, 6'4", 203 pounds. He's got a lot of power. He hits for a high average. He uses the entire field. And he was a first-time All-Star in 2021 with the Cincinnati Reds. He, too, will be entering his age 30 season and is likely to opt out in search of a big payday. Next up is outfielder Michael Conforto of the New York Mets. He's had a few good years. He was an All-Star in 2017. He hit 33 home runs and drove in 92 runs in 2019. He hit 322 during the COVID-shortened 2020 season, but his age 28 season with the Mets was kind of a letdown. He will be entering his age 29 season, so there's plenty of hope that he could bounce back in the right situation. Next up is Carlos Correa. The 6'4", 220-pound shortstop was the number one overall pick in the 2012 June Amateur Draft. He won a World Series with the Astros. In 2021, he had another very nice season on both sides of the ball. He's got a ton of power. He's a good defensive player. And if it weren't for the scandal in 2017, he might be looking at a four or $500 million contract. It'll be a nice addition wherever he decides to go. There are few certainties in life. The sun will rise in the east, set in the west, and Nelson Cruz will smash home runs. Cruz had another very solid offensive season in 2021, and he was traded from the Minnesota Twins to the Tampa Bay Rays at the trade deadline. At age 41, he's not going to give you much on defense these days, but he would make an excellent DH and a right-handed power bat for any team that could use a little bit of thump in their lineup. If your team is looking for a versatile veteran who can play all over the infield, who can switch hit, and who has a bit of pop, Eduardo Escobar is your guy. He's going to be 33 years old during the 2022 season, but he's still playing at a high level. He's coming off of a three-year deal, and it's not unreasonable to expect that he'll ask for another one, especially given how well he's played over the past few years. He was traded to Milwaukee from Arizona at the trade deadline in 2021. Freddie Freeman of the Atlanta Braves is coming off of another fantastic season offensively, defensively, and even runs the bases very, very well. He's a contact hitter. He's got power to all fields. He's always in the game. And he was the National League MVP in 2020. He's also got a few other top 10 MVP finishes, multiple all-star appearances. It's hard to envision him ever leaving Atlanta, where he's been since he came up as a 20-year-old in 2010. Kevin Gossman just continues to improve. After coming up with Baltimore and having several solid seasons, 
He moved on to Atlanta and Cincinnati, but now with San Francisco, he's really busted out. He's got a fantastic split-fingered fastball that keeps guys missing. He's got more than a strikeout and inning, and he is just 30 years old, so he would be a nice investment. If I were him, I would ask for a seven-year contract. He'll probably end up getting five or six years from a decent team that's contending. Worked out pretty well for Kevin Gossman. While Zach Granke may not be the same guy who posted a 1.66 ERA in route to second place for a Cy Young Award in 2015 with the Dodgers, he's still a very solid pitcher. He's a multiple-time All-Star, and even at age 37 in 2021, he takes the ball every single day. He doesn't strike out quite as many people as he used to, and he relies on soft contact, but he's still got very good command of the baseball and he's a durable pitcher. Even at age 38, I can see him getting a two-year deal. Clayton Kershaw has been around forever, but he's still just 34 years old. He should still have a couple of good years left in him. I can't imagine him leaving the Dodgers, where he's pitched for his entire career, which began in 2008, and includes three Cy Young Awards. Some people just shouldn't ever change uniforms. And in my opinion, Clayton Kershaw is a Dodger for life. I think he'll end up back with the Dodgers, but if someone else decides to ante up, there's always that chance he could pitch in another uniform. Kershaw has nine top 10 Cy Young Award finishes in his career. Starling Marte began the 2021 season playing for the Miami Marlins. He was traded to the Oakland Athletics during the pennant race. He's got a ton of speed. He's a really good contact hitter from the right side. He's an excellent defender, and at age 33, he's probably not going to be asking for a 10-year contract, so he could be a steal, no pun intended. Marte would be a good fit for any contender that needs a little bit of outfield help or a little bit of contact hitting or speed. Robbie Ray has always been recognized by fans and by scouts alike as being a pitcher with a very high ceiling, and in 2021, He may have hit that ceiling. He was outstanding for the Toronto Blue Jays, one of the best starting pitchers in the major leagues. He's got great command of the baseball, especially a wipeout slider that he can throw to either lefties or in on the hands of righties to pick up strikeouts. Robbie Ray will be a great pickup for whoever decides to ante up. He's going to be expensive. Anthony Rizzo. Another iconic Cub that was traded at the trade deadline. He ended up with the New York Yankees. He is still a great defender over there at first base. One of the best in baseball. He's got great range both towards the line and in the hole. He can make the 3-6-3 double play. And he's a good contact hitter with a little bit of pop. It will be interesting to see if the Yankees choose to re-sign him. Because he's going to be asking for a decent amount of money. And the Yankees do have Luke Voigt but Luke Voigt hits from the right side and is not a great defender. Carlos Rodon, he is a former first round draft pick who had a couple of decent years, but was pretty bad in 2020 before having a breakout season in 2021 in which he averaged more than a strikeout per inning and had a very nice ERA. At 6'3", 245 pounds, he is a big framed lefty who will be just 29 years old in 2022 And he's still got an upper 90s fastball, which he uses with regularity. He'll come right at you. Represented by Scott Boris, he's sure to get the most out of his bounce back season. Even in his age 36 season, Max Scherzer was one of the most deadly pitchers in the major leagues. And he was absolutely dominant after being traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers at the trade deadline. Over his first seven starts, he was 5-0 with a 1.05 ERA. He is a proven champion with three Cy Young Awards and multiple top 10 MVP finishes. And even at age 37, he's got some of the best stuff in the major leagues with a high-octane fastball and multiple wipeout strikeout pitches. Corey Seager is another one of the talented shortstops to hit the market this winter. He's had some injury troubles over the past couple of years, but when he's healthy, he's an offensive weapon and a defensive machine. He had 44 doubles in 2019. He won a silver slugger in 2017, and of course, he was the rookie of the year back in 2016. 
The 2022 season will be his age 28 season, so it wouldn't surprise me if he's looking for a 9, 10, 11 year contract. We'll see if he gets it. 2021 is a banner year for Marcus Simeon with a career high in home runs. He also made the all-star team for the first time. People forget, though, that he was also an excellent player in 2019. He finished top three in MVP voting and had an 892 OPS with 33 home runs and 43 doubles. That goes along with seven triples. He's obviously got great speed. He's never stolen a ton of bases in his career, but his ratio improved vastly in 2021. It was a curious move in 2021 when Trevor Story was not traded at the deadline by the Rockies. Rockies content to pick up a draft pick for losing him as a free agent. They do not intend to sign him, and I don't think they could sign him if they wanted to. Now, when you think of Trevor Story, you might think about offense because he had 27 home runs as a rookie. He's had two seasons with 35-plus, but he's also an excellent shortstop. He's a two-time All-Star, and he won the Silver Slugger for shortstop in 2018 and 2019 with the Rockies. With his heavy sinker, Marcus Stroman remains one of the best ground ball pitchers in baseball. He was initially with the Blue Jays, came over to the Mets in 2019, did not play in 2020. He opted out because of the COVID pandemic, and he bounced back strong in 2021. At 5'7", 180 pounds, Marcus Stroman is not the prototypical pitcher. Shorter pitchers tend to have more shoulder and elbow injuries. However, he is an excellent pitcher. He accepted the qualifying offer for this season, but is not expected to do so after the 2021 season. There are a number of impact players who could be free agents, but do have team options. Johnny Cueto has a team option. Buster Posey having an excellent season behind the dish. He has a team option. Mike Zanino, ton of power. He has a team option. Kyle Seeger could join his brother in free agency if his team option is declined. J.D. Martinez with the Red Sox also has a team option. Honorable mention to Kyle Schwarber, Jock Peterson, and Jorge Soler, who all had impactful moments during the 2021 season, as well as some guys returning from injury, Justin Verlander and Noah Syndergaard. Hope you enjoyed this list. Let me know who you think is signing where. Huge baseballs.